say he preached to the fig tree and they heard him talk to the tree and what did he tell the tree no more fruit from you anymore the next day went by one synoptic view of the gospel and they said look the tree is withered up by the roots the tree that you cursed that you spoke to Another view says that it withered up immediately. That tells me that the other one that wrote that says the next day he wasn't paying attention when it did wither up immediately. So he thought it was the next day. (laughs) Possibly. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, he spoke to the tree. Paul said to Timothy, he said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Preach it. Amen. Preach it to your house. Preach it to your finances. Preach it to your walls. Preach it to your street. Of course, preach it to the people. Preach it to your body. When your body gets out of line, you preach the word to your body. Preach the gospel to it. I'm going to say to you, body, by his stripes. I got good news for you, body. I'm supposed to preach the gospel to you, body. And in the gospel, by his stripes, you you are healed in Jesus' name. You talk to your body. You preach to it. Hmm? That was that little, little nugget there, okay? Moving right along. So I want to go back And we may just wrap it up here. Go back with me to Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah 28. I have further light in this passage where it's prophesied about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Look at this. I love it. Verse 11, it says, with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people to whom he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. And help me, this is the refreshing. Now, Paul references this passage in relation to the ministry of the Spirit. So we know that we have the witness, of course, from the old, but we have the witness from the the new testifying about what was prophesied in the old concerning the baptism of the Holy Spirit and power. Hmm? So with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people to whom he said, and of course he lays that out. What I want to point out to you, there's two words I want you to see. You might make some notes next to it in your Bible. And if you can't write in your Bible, then get a Bible you can write in. Hello? But the word there just speak. I don't want to butcher the Hebrew language, but it's the Hebrew word dabar. And I don't know if I'm putting the right accent on it, but... Nevertheless, here's what that word means, the word speak. He says, I will speak, say to, to. Those are the two words I want to focus on, the word speak and the word to. Because as I would read it, I was thinking, you know, I know it's referring to the Holy Ghost, but it says he's speaking to the people. So I want to do a little study here and dig a little deeper, see what it says. And so here it is. The bar, the word means this, arrange. How many of y'all could use some things, help from God to arrange things? Huh? How, how many could use some help to get some things rearranged? That's what that word means also. He goes, uh, he, he's, hmm? with stammering lips and another tongue, he will arrange 
And then I thought, I was like, man, you know what? It doesn't sound right. So arrange to this people. Arrange to this people. Here's another one. Subdue. Answer. Commune. Destroy. Teach. Work. Declare. Commune to the people. I still have a hard time with that. But then I looked up the word to in the Hebrew, and it also means this. It means among, it means through, and within. So now let's read it this way. <laughs> With stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak through this people, talking about the Spirit-filled, baptizing the Holy Ghost people. So now you could read it this way. With stammering lips and another tongue, he will arrange through these people. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God is praying out the perfect plan and will of God through you. Say, through me. And that's what he's talking about, through. So he will arrange things through you praying in the Spirit, and the Spirit gives you utterance. And when you get over there using the gift that God has blessed you with through this great baptism of the Holy Ghost, when you're praying things out, you'll pray out arrangements. God will pray through you and get things arranged that are not arranged like they should be. Hello. Isn't that good? Through. Say through. What will he pray through you? He will subdue things through you praying in the Spirit. There's some things that need to be subdued. I thought it was interesting. He will work. That's what it means. He will, look at this, he will work through you. With stammering lips and another tongue, he will work through you, and this is the rest. And this is the refreshing. Don't you know that you will come into a place of rest and refreshing when you take the time to pray in the Holy Ghost with stammering lips and another tongue and things will become subdued by the power of the Lord and the word of the Lord flowing through your mouth. Things will come into arrangement through, through you when you're praying in the Holy Ghost. Things will come... Uh, Things will be declared. That's another word. It's declared through you when you're praying in the Holy Ghost. Other things will be destroyed when you're praying in the Holy Ghost because the enemy has a plan and he tries to set you up. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost and you allow the Holy Ghost to flow through you and begin to arrange things and subdue things and destroy the things that need to be destroyed in your life. Hey, come on now. Wow! Then you won't be sitting around saying, Lord, what's up? He says, I'm up. Aren't you up? You should be up. I'm, you're seated in heavenly places with me. You should be saying, that's up. What's up? We're up. Lord, when are you going to do this? And he's saying, I've already made it away. I've already made a way for you. When are you going to pray it out? The Spirit of God in you and through you. Ooh. I hear an echo in here. And I like it. That's it. That's what he said. With stammering lips and another tongue, I will speak through this people. And this is the rest. Don't you think you'll find rest when you've taken the time to use the most unused and neglected power in the church today and you begin to pray and he begins to work through you and he begins to speak through you and he begins to destroy things that need to be destroyed in your life and he begins to subdue things for you. Hey, hey, hey. That'll kind of make you feel restful and refreshed. Glory to God. I like it. So when he says to this people, he's talking about through this people, within this people, among this people, hello. 
I thank God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the ability to pray in the Spirit and pray out God's plan. Hello. I want you to go with me to Romans chapter 8. We'll close here. I thought we'd close back there, but, you know, I was just thinking. Are you still with me? Come on, work with me. Somebody go, oh, no. What time is it? Who cares? We've we got food. We can feed you. you won't, don't worry. <laughs> Sitting there thinking about that. Glory. Glory. Amen. Look at this. <clears throat> Verse 18 says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed. What? In us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Did you hear that? The earnest expectation of the creation. Did you know the Bible says that the earth is part of the creation? Groans, groans, waiting for the manifestation. Listen to me, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. There is a connection with the manifestation, what he's preaching about, of the sons of God and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire and the church that has the part, the, that, that part of the body of Christ that has accepted what the Word says about that needs to rise up in it. Amen? And I venture to say, like most, I would say, I can't say most, but a lot of those who are Pentecostal, spirit-filled, tongue-talking folks never pray in the Spirit. Only The only time they do is if they're in a corporate setting where someone is leading and says, let's pray in the Spirit, everybody. And they pray because they can pray, because they know how to pray, because they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. But outside of that, the Holy Spirit is totally inactive on the inside of them. Every now and then, they'll get a little, you know, hello, I'm, I'm here. Uh, dunamis is here. You know what dunamis is? Miracle working power. Yes, I am in you. Hello, can we have a little time together today? Hmm? And so I'm going to keep preaching this. I'm going to keep preaching this until we have more testimonies. I had one testimony on Wednesday night. God bless you, cat. She said, I'm going to take what he said. I'm going to run with it. And I gave a, I didn't, Holy Ghost gave a 10-day challenge. Remember what we're talking about? They went down there and they, uh, to Jerusalem, and they waited for 10 days, and they prayed and worshiped God. And then after 10 days, they got filled with Holy Ghost. And I said, there's something about that 10 days. And I challenge you, pray, for 10 days, pray in the Holy Ghost. If you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, and you can speak in tongues and commune with God. Pray in the Holy Ghost for just 10 days. If you don't pray on a regular basis, just do it for 10 days straight. Don't miss a day, 10 days, 15 minutes a day, maybe a half hour. You'll find after a few days that 15 minutes is, is going to go by so fast. The next thing you know, 30 minutes, an hour, and beyond. And then if you've never experienced that tangible anointing and feel your spirit on the inside, you'll begin to feel your spirit on the inside. There's some people that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, spoken tongues for 25 years. When I say speak in tongues, they only spoke in tongues like I mentioned whenever folks get together. Okay, we're praying in tongues. I can do that. I know how to do that. But outside of that, they never spent an hour praying in tongues ever in their life. And then all of a sudden, one day, they decide, you know what? I've got this great, the most unused, neglected power on the face of the planet living inside of me, the Holy Ghost. I think, what would happen? What would happen if I did pray for 15 minutes every day or a half hour? What would happen? What would happen inside of me if I prayed for an hour in the Spirit worshiping God? What would happen if I prayed a couple hours a day? Ooh, that's what happened. Well, come on now. Ooh. And Kat was testifying on Wednesday night. And it was a beautiful testimony. She said, I took that challenge and I started, and you know, I had this experience and the Lord told me to go to this place and I went there and then I ministered to somebody and God moved supernaturally. And then all of a sudden I felt the anointing and the spirit inside my spirit, my belly. I felt him. I felt the presence of God. I've never felt him down on the inside. He's always been there. 
But there's something about that tangible, velvety presence of Almighty God that stirs up on the inside that's so tangible, so real. And then the more you grow in Him and the deeper you go with Him, the stronger it becomes. And then you begin to recognize the still, small voice of God that speaks very clearly and very loudly on the inside. Hello! That I would say a majority of those who are filled with the Holy Ghost, quote, filled with the Spirit, never ever experience it because they never, never give God enough time and exercise that prayer language ever. Hello? And they're on the phone calling saying, can you pray for this situation? Can you pray for that situation? Can you pray for this situation if there's that situation? And then we have Isaiah 28 and verse 11, 8, 11, 8, 11. God bless you, brother. 28 verse 8 with stammering lips and another tongue, I will proclaim, I will declare, I will commune through them, I will subdue, I will work through them. And you have the answer on the inside of you all along. It's okay. Don't feel bad about going to somebody or me or anybody to pray in agreement with you about anything. I don't want you to not do that. I want you to do that. But the answer and the power of God is on the inside of you. Hello? Huh? The things that you want others to pray for so that God will arrange these things for you. And he's saying, if you open your mouth and pray in this blessed Holy Ghost, ah, ha, ha, he will arrange it through you. I didn't even finish over here in in, uh, Romans. Hmm. So anyway... What did he say here? For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. God intended for this earth to belong to the children of God, not the world and the wicked. All the wealth and all of that. Are you listening? It belongs to the children of God. Say the wealth of the planet belongs to the children of God. That's what he said. It's plenty in the word to support it. Amen. But it's the wicked that's mining it and getting it. Hmm? Almost done. What else does he say? For we know that the whole creation groans and labors, in verse 22, with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and the redemption of the body. For we, well, anyway, so move on here to verse, uh, let's read on, verse 23. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, yes? Verse 24, for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, I want you to read this with me together. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Stop right there. For us is not there. It's omitted in the earlier manuscripts. So what it reads is this, the Holy Spirit himself makes intercession with groanings. That's a deep unction of the Spirit. When you pray and you get over there into a place, there's a travailing kind of a prayer, and it's an awesome, awesome presence of God on the inside of you. We call it a birthing prayer to birth things into the world, amen, into your life. It says, now, look at this, verse 27. He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God or according to the plan of God. The word will is not there. It just says according to God. Say according According. to God. Now I'm going to kick over a sacred cow. I don't think it's much of a sacred cow here, but if it is a sacred cow... Then I claim the filet mignon part of that cow after I want to barbecue it and cook it. Amen. But here's the sacred cow. It's one of the most misused and misinterpreted scriptures in the Bible. And here's what it says. 
Now let's read verse 27 and flow right into it. Oh, no, we'll just read it and then we'll do that. Look at verse 28. And we know, come on, help me. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purposes. How is that scripture used? At funerals or to explain why some terrible thing happened to a saint of God. And because they don't know what the word says about that, they say, but we know that all things work together for good. So even though this is a very bad situation, we don't know why God did it. We don't know why God allowed it. We don't know. His high thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. But we do know this. Help me. And we, come on, and we know all things work together for good to those who love God. Hello, let's stop right there. That scripture's always taken out of context at funerals. Well, we don't know why God allowed them to die so young. We don't understand it. We don't have to understand it. All we do need to know is, and we know all things work together for good. Hello? Did you know that the context of that statement, we just read it right now, is this. All things work together for good to those who pray in other tongues. To those who pray by the unction and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, those things that may be difficult in your life that you're going through, the Spirit of God will arrange things, He'll subdue things, He'll conquer things, He'll overcome things, but He needs your mouth and your spirit to do it through. Yeah. And we know, and we know, that's, that word and is a conjunction. It's connected to the previous statement. And the statement before that is this, that the Holy Spirit gives us utterance because we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Holy Spirit gives us utterance to pray out the perfect plan of God. Hello! And we know. And we know. Praise God. And this is the rest. And this is the refreshing. So here's what I'm going to do with this message today. I'm going to challenge you to a 28-day and 11-hour Put Isaiah 28, 11 up there, please. <laughs> I'm challenging you to a 28-day and 11-hour challenge for the next 28 days based upon Isaiah 28, 11, to allow God through your lips, stammering lips in another tongue, to arrange things, subdue things, work through you, and do it every day. And let's get, the back, get, excuse me, let's get back together in 28 and 11 hours. 28 days and 11 hours. So I'm trying to get it out fast because we got to do something right now. Thank you, Bob. Break it, out. Break it out. I'm breaking it out. So, you know, I thought, well, they took that, some of them took that 10-day challenge and God did some wonderful things. 28, say 28. 28. Now, you don't have to start today. You can start tomorrow. Or whatever. How about if I just say start tomorrow? Start tomorrow. And set yourself apart in a way that you've never done before. Now some of you, you already do that already. So here's what I'm going to say to you. You're already consistently doing that and praying like that. And then step it up. Add some more time with God. You excited? Yes. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. No, come on. Are you messing with me? I, and here I challenge you to do this. I log every day my spiritual advances in God, you know. And if I was distracted that day, I still log it. I put a circle and a line through it. Distracted. <laughs> Too many things going on. But I, I, you know, I look through my log 
and everything, every time where I see a little zero, I don't see too many of them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not under any condemnation over it. But I log everything I read in the Word and, uh, you know, what I pray and, and, you know, even like daily communion that and praying the Ephesians prayers. I just keep a log of it because I like to know where I'm at. I keep myself accountable to myself. Uh, seriously, you know how time gets by? Huh? Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for stammering lips and another tongue. Answers are awaiting me in my spirit. Thank you, Lord, for praying through me, working through me, arranging things through me, through tongues. Amen. Come on, that's good, isn't it? Hello? If you're depressed, if you're down, if you're anything, the answer is 2811. I'm not kidding. I'm serious with the word. You know what I'm saying. If you're all like depressed and there's no joy and there's no rest and there's no refreshing in your life and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, the answer is 2811. Praise the Lord. So, Amen. So after the service today, for those of you who have never been baptized with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I would be, Francis and I would be glad to lay hands on you and pray over you and you will be filled with the Spirit of God. Are you listening? Amen. I believe we should have 100% those who are actively exercising and developing their prayer language and their prayer life in other tongues. Amen. That's who we are. Now, I'm unashamedly charismatic in expression. That's what, the, that's, that's what our website says. It, what, what about Faith Alive Christian Center? Faith Alive Christian Center is unashamedly charismatic in expression of our worship and our praise to God. Amen? The gifts of the Spirit are welcome in this place publicly and openly. I say that just for us. That's our assignment. I can't speak for anybody else, and I won't condemn or judge anybody else over it if they don't do what we do. I'm not going to persecute another man's assignment. Amen. Hallelujah. But that's our assignment, and we're going to stick with it. All right. Praise the Lord. Some spirit-filled guy said to me, if you guys would tone it down a little bit and not be so expressive concerning the gifts of the Spirit even though I know it's biblical and it is scriptural, but our culture can't handle it. Gee, really? I'm not trying to impress the culture. I'm here to minister to the body of Christ. And, you know, we want to reach out to those who are saved, amen, or not saved, and saved too, yes, both. We want to get the saved people saved. Hey, praise the Lord. Get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The only people that walk out of a service like this when we have the gifts of the Spirit are those who are saved, who have been religiously brainwashed instead of New Testament taught. The ones that are not saved, they're not offended by it. It doesn't bother them because I want you to know tongues are a sign to the unbeliever. Drink from the water right now. It's flowing to you because it's flowing to you. And it's flowing to me. It's Holy Ghost anointing. And it's time to be free. It's river flowing from the throne of God. Drink from the water right now. Oh, drink it in. There's a river flowing. It's a mighty river flow. 